Hello and welcome to the channel Rickosaurus Rex where we discuss and review all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. Today we have uh, our second in our latest set of three Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series action figures. This time we have the Utah Ceratops Yeti. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, you see the packaging. You see the uh, figure clearly in the packaging as well as the sleeve with some nice artwork over Utah Ceratops. Turning it over, once again, you know about that uh, logo and that uh, trike avatar. On the back, we have that sleeve and we uh, see the uh, Beasts of the Mesozoic, the, uh, the checklist there. And uh, this is... Uh, Wave three. Wave three. So I believe this is my second wave three figure. Bringing up the rear there. And uh, as far as the sleeve is concerned, we have uh, that same artwork. And that's what the collectible card that's included with every piece of the Mesozoic figure. That's what it'll look like. It's also an informational card that'll have this information on the uh, flip side of it. Utah Ceratops get ye, which stands for Utah Horn Face. Length around 7 meters or 23 feet long, so it was a little larger. Location, Kaiparowicz Formation, Utah, USA, the time period, late Cretaceous, 76.4 million years ago. Robust and powerful Utah Ceratops had a large elongated frill and three short horns. Named with Cosmoceratops in 2010, the two Chasmosaurines lived at the same time and location. Possibly predatory threats included Teratophonius and Albertosaurus. So yeah, pretty cool there. Let's look at the top there to see the sleeve. This is number 22. You have 20 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail, and the profile card is included. So like I said, taking the sleeve off and looking at the box there this is wave three that's the checklist that they give and uh, yeah Triceratops is in this one as well as Taurosaurus which I do have which I do have so uh, now I have Utah Ceratops and uh, a spoiler alert I do have a third one I've got the Sinoceratops too which will be the next the next review that we'll do here so uh, yeah Turning us back to the front here. So we get a final look at our Utah Ceratops in the packaging. And now it's time to get him out. As with all Beasts of the Mesozoic figures, it comes with a backdrop. And they're usually quite stunning. And this is no exception. This is like a, uh, a dusk. It's uh, you know starting to become nighttime there, and uh, I mean this this is one of the better ones, and that's saying a lot, since most of the backdrops that I've seen already have been spot on excellent. And here we have our Utah Ceratops on our rotating platter, and uh, it's a big boy. I had to uh, push the legs you know closer in so he can. Uh, be on the uh, rotating base so he could fit and uh, yeah it still worked out so that's pretty cool can't do this with uh, some of the uh, won't be able to do this at all when I get to Triceratops if any of you recall when I did Taurosaurus there was no way on earth that he was getting on that base so uh, you know the same thing is going to go for the Triceratops because uh, it's the same it's the same, uh, the same size as the Taurosaurus, as they were both believed to be of similar sizes in real life. As far as uh, our uh, Utah Ceratops is concerned, all I can say is the uh, the colors are uh, striking on uh, this this guy as well. And as always, it's all about the skull and uh, the horn ornamentation in that frill. So uh, let's get him off the base now that you've all seen him and are seeing him go round and round. And uh, we'll take a uh, look at him a little bit more close up. 
But before we do that, please uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and uh, help us uh, keep this ship afloat. But now, let's get our Utah Ceratops off of the rotating base. I nearly forgot to show off the uh, informational collectible card. Here we go. As uh, stated, it's exactly the same artwork that we saw on the sleeve, and it has the same information that I previously read off, also included is the uh, instructions on how to apply the tail if you need to use uh, heat in order to get it on because sometimes it's pretty hard. I actually had to use heat on my Utah Ceratops this go round. So pretty informative right there. And uh, yeah, so that's that card. Now we can look at our Utah Ceratops. And once again, I had stated about how striking the color scheme is. It is inspired by the Gila monster. Yes, indeed. Uh, as uh, always with uh, Beast of the Mesozoic, they take the inspiration from existing reptiles and amphibians. And in this go round, it is uh, the Utah Ceratops has been uh, inspired by the Gila monster, and I can definitely see it. Of course, uh, they take a certain artistic license liberties, and uh, you know build on the uh, the base which is once again the Gila monster very striking lizard uh, poisonous one of two poisonous lizards and uh, I'm sure the, the uh, Utah Ceratops wasn't poisonous but it you know it probably didn't even really look like this either but it looks like this for us so that's good while we've got him out let's take a measurement he's a pretty nice sized boy here so from tail tip to beak our Utah Ceratops is 14 inches long and doing the calculations based on the 118th scale that would put this guy if it was a living animal at around 21 feet so uh, it's in there give or take so uh, that's pretty good there so yeah it would be representative of a 21 foot long animal that is our Utah Ceratops let's get our guy up closer so we can check out that head sculpt and the rest of him here we have the Utah Ceratops looking right at the skull and uh, like I said striking that uh, color scheme is definitely working with this particular particular uh, Ceratops in here you've got the uh, base is like a black you can see the textures the scalation there you got the the colors of the beak it's like a nice brownish color there um, and that's also extended with the nasal horn and of course the brow horns as well you've got some as I turn turn him forward there you've got uh, going down the middle there it's like a, a blood orange type of color uh, right there the ridges on the uh, Leading up to the beak, it's got a, uh, a dry brushing uh, that uh, is darker and it uh, kind of sort of brings it out there. You've got a nice pattern here on the uh, the frill. It's uh, looking pretty nice there when you get to what I always like to call the uh, eyes uh, on the frill. It is a lighter orange there uh, surrounded by the blacks. And then of course with the frill itself, you see it's got the nice brownish bone style looking color there and it has a, uh, a dry brushing over it as well bring out that uh, that look you could see the uh, the textures there it looks like it you know they're they're worn talking about the uh, the spikes pretty cool at the side there you've got like I said the ridges there you got some some uh, more of that blood orange you've got the uh, cheek spikes trying to look behind the back of the frill that patterning continues the uh, the coloring on the spikes you see it's on the back there and the frill actually has a pattern back there sometimes we just get plain color but not this go around so that's appreciative as far as the neck goes you've got that uh, Gila monster style coloring there it's it's basically it the base is uh, that uh, that orange and then of course you've got the uh, the black 
striping, if you will, if you want to call it that. If you go at the top, it's really the blood orange and it gets lighter as it goes down. It continues and it gets even lighter as it makes its way to the belly. And you can see the, the scalation going on there. You've got that striping looking really nice. You talk about the uh, the four limbs. You go down, and uh, the front of them starts off. Uh, you know, it's uh, like dark, and it gets lighter. And you've got the black striping still. When you get to the feet, all the way down there, it gets black. Down to the bottom, the the toes are uh, painted like a a beige, and only three of them are painted pretty accurate. The uh, the other two toes, which are uh, are semi weight bearing if you will they uh, didn't have claws on them so pretty accurate there the uh, hind limb you see how that is when it gets down to about mid mid thigh it just changes to like a very dark brown color and uh, then you have some of the uh, kind of orange spots down there it keeps going and uh, it's it's a uh, hind paws. The four claws there are all painted as they should be. Pretty nice. Look at the back there. You've got the uh, spots of that uh, kind of orange. Then you go down. You got the tail. The tail uh, is striping up there as the colors get lighter. And uh, but they stay striped until we get to the very tip. And of course that continues on to the other side there. That's what you get. Looking at the top, you see. It's dark red, and then it works its way down, going right down to the uh, hindquarters there. Dark red, you got the uh, the very dark brown, and then the striping, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. And uh, that is our Utah Ceratops. Going over its articulation, the jaw moves up and down. This one closes. Uh, a lot more than some so that's cool as far as the head the head you can turn left and right and up and down independent of the neck but when you add in the neck you can get it further down and up and go to the left and right a whole lot more you can rotate the head which is very nice the body you can uh, go left and right up and down a bit with that, as far as the uh, forelimbs are concerned, you can splay them out, get them in. They do rotate. You've got a joint there at the elbow that uh, rotates and uh, bends. And then, of course, the uh, front paw there. You've got that articulation there. It swivels, goes up, down, and uh, it does pivot. The hind leg also rotates it does splay out a little bit just a little bit and you get the the merest of uh, articulation at the knee not that much it only goes very little you're gonna get any movement for different poses at that secondary joint here in the back that does articulate some and then of course the feet go down up and uh, they swivel so you do get that and then of course the tail goes down up left right and if you want to spin it you could do that as well for some comparisons i brought out the cosmoceratops because both it and the utah ceratops were named in the same year 2010 and here we have our utah ceratops with the protoceratops helena corhinus the larger of the two known species of protoceratops and here he is with our previously reviewed figure the medusa ceratops looking very nice there two very striking color schemes and now using the included backdrop try to get some uh, some poses uh, with that so here is the uh, same pose that I've been having the Uticeratops and only this time I've got the mouth open we have Uticeratops rearing up looking like he's trying to fend off an attacker probably an Albertosaurus and I cannot wait until we start receiving uh, figs from the uh, Tyrannosaur series because uh, they do include a uh, an Albertosaurus and a Teratophonius as a part of uh, those uh, waves that series and finally just have his head up there rearing and uh, roaring in uh, 
in uh, in anger, probably uh, maybe uh, in mourning as well. Once again, being able to uh, pose these figures is uh, a blessing in my eyes. So in conclusion, the Beast of the Mesozoic Utah Ceratops, another welcome addition. They're all going to be welcome for me, so I'll just be repeating myself. I'll go on record and say that now, but once again, the head sculpt, the frill, the skull, the ornamentation is just top notch. The, uh, the inspiration, the Gila monster that was used as a basis for this paint scheme was brilliant. This is a, uh, a well painted figure. It looks great. And I think it's appropriate for uh, this species. When you look at the, uh, the, uh, the nasal and the brow horns and the, uh, the ridges and the spikes on the frill, I think it just works. It really does. It, it uh, matches this species well. Very, very nice addition to my Beasts of the Mesozoic collection. Bravo again to Creative Beast Studios. So that'll do it for this review. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your questions, comments, uh, concerns, critiques down below. And if you want to be uh, notified when I upload another video, please hit that notification bell and notified you shall be. Once again, Utah Ceratops, very beautiful. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care.